Hey guys, thanks for joining me for the episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Oko Chronicles. This is a brand new game being put out by the Red Joker. It is a two to five player game that takes roughly two to three hours to play, and it is a one versus many game. So one player is going to be controlling the, the greater demon Oni, and the other players are going to be fighting against him with their bands of demon hunting heroes. So in the game itself, the Oni player is going to be going against the heroes and his objectives are to meet any mission objectives that are in the scenario as well as fleeing from the overall scene at the end of the game. And the hero players are working together to try to unmask him and determine where the Oni, which inhabitant the Oni is hiding behind and then which Oni they're going to be facing. From there, once they unmask him, if they can defeat him in combat, then they will, they will end the game. And the game itself is very interesting in the way that it's set up. It is set up in a story arc. So depending upon the scenario you play, as you complete objectives or do different things, and each hero will have a secondary objective, there's going to be cards that you're going to place into a story, a linear story. And at the end of the game, based on how many cards that the heroes were successfully able to accomplish versus how many uh, cards the Oni player was able to successfully accomplish, each one is going to be worth a certain number of points, and the side that has the most points at the end will be the overall winning side. So it's a very interesting way of, of handling that to determine winning and losing, because the only player may end up winning the overall scenario, but if the heroes were able to accomplish enough secondary goals and doing different things, they could potentially overall have more points. So it'll be interesting to see how that is blended into the game, and depending upon if they, they will have campaigns and different things that will have overall story arcs that will influence based on how the players are able to do in each mission. So it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. So moving into my opinions of the game, I've had a good time with it. This is uh, the third title from Red Joker using this type of system. They've had a couple other ones uh, they put out before this. And each time that they put out one of these, they continue to refine and work on these rules and add new things uh, to just really streamline the system. So I haven't had a chance to play the other ones. I, I watched a couple of videos to get familiar with some of the different things and see what they've used in the past versus what they're doing now. And even with this one, this again, when you guys see this later on in the video, this is a prototype copy. Uh, all these things are going to be improved. I'll be using standees for uh, all the enemies and heroes where in the final production copy, these are going to be high quality miniatures, uh, which I'll show you a couple of them. They sent me a couple of uh, 3D printed ones, which obviously aren't the final versions, but it'll give you guys a good idea of the kind of detail that you might expect from the uh, full production copies. Other than that, uh, you guys are also going to see that I'll be using um, some dice in this. These are not the dice you'll be getting again. Uh, the dice that you'll be getting with the game are all oriented towards this game. They'll have um, more things that will theme them with it, where these are these are dice from the previous game. So again, keep that in mind. Uh, none of these things are final, and they are even working on some of the little fine-tuning parts of the game. So even some of those things will be uh, streamlined even more as the game goes on. And I'm sure they're going to show you some of that in the Kickstarter. So moving back to my opinions, like I said, I had a good time with this one. Uh, it's really interesting to see how companies approach these one versus many games. And I would, I, as myself personally, I always love to have it fully cooperative where all the players are working together. Um, but there's certain mechanics in this one I could definitely see would be very challenging to do that with, uh, especially with the players basically trying to investigate and figure out which inhabitant the Oni player is. So it's kind of like a mystery. Um, and so having a player control that aspect I don't really see how that would be done any other way. So I really like the way that they are doing some of that. I really like that aspect of the game and the way that the Oni player works. Uh, he has his own board. So as the game goes on and, and as the rounds go by, he be, slowly becomes more powerful as he gains more influence over uh, the inhabitants and uh, increasing their abilities. So every every round he'll be able to put out new tokens, which will slowly bump up his enemies. So as the hero players work at getting new abilities and new items, uh, he slowly increases and becomes more powerful as well. So as the game progresses, it slowly gets harder and harder for the hero players uh, as time goes on. 
And I also like really, really like how they approach the hero players as instead of having it all being dice controlled, uh, the heroes players have a deck of cards each as well that will allow them to play them in two different locations, either left or right of their card. And depending upon what they do with that, uh, it's either going to be a, a bump for that round uh, to their stats, or it'll give them another special ability or action that they can perform. Or even cooperatively, uh, some of the actions will actually work as a team. So uh, one player could potentially give other players more actions or boosts to different things. So it's it really does uh, help in keeping the players uh, cooperative and working together to accomplish their goals. So I really like that aspect of the game. So there's some really, really interesting features to this. I'm going to try to cover them in some of the, in the video as I show you guys some of these features, and I would definitely recommend checking this one out. I've had a good time with it, and uh, I'd also love to hear your guys' thoughts. Is this one you guys are interested in or looking at backing? If so, why? And if not, why? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on some of those things as we move into this Kickstarter. I'm really excited to see some of the stretch goals they got planned for this as well. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll show you what this is all about. So the first thing we're going to go over is the Oni player. So since he's fighting all the other players, he's going to have his own special dashboard, which is going to keep track of the current round, as well as all of his upgrades for his demonic creatures and his castle guards. As the, grounds, the rounds progress, he's going to get access to tokens that he'll be able to place on his different upgrades to improve his troops. So during rounds 2, 4, 6, and 8, he will be able to place a corruption token out on one of the tiles that will allow him to gain control of all the standard guards in that tile. On top of that, he will also receive a token that he will be able to place on one of the slots to improve his troops as the game progresses. On your odd number rounds, he'll be able to increase or improve his demonic creatures. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the different characters that he's going to be controlling. So for the, the gray characters, he's going to have some minions, which are standard guards for the castle. We have samurai and lieutenants. And each of these characters is going to have a description, a basic description of what they are, any special abilities that they have, and their different attributes, which is their speed or movement, their attack power, defense power, and number of actions they will receive, and the total number of hit points that they have before they are eliminated. On the demonic side, we have a couple of minion class characters. So we have uh, ninjas, and then there's lieutenants that are going to be more powerful. And then finally, the oni himself, which... He will be able to choose from four different ones initially. And so at the beginning of the game, he's going to go ahead and grab the evidence cards deck, and he's going to remove two cards in that deck. One card will be the Oni himself that he's playing as. So he'll choose one of the four different uh, de uh, greater demons to play as. So let's go ahead and say we play as Cage. So we'll remove that. And the rest of them will be put back in the deck. And then he's also going to choose the agent th that is currently out to be his uh, particular one that he's going to be playing as, as a hidden role. So the other players are going to be working together to try to figure out which one of the different inhabitants of the castle is the actual Oni and which Oni he is. So let's go ahead and say that he chose these two. So then the rest of these are going to be added back to the deck, and this is going to be shuffled up, and this will be the evidence deck that the players will pull from throughout the game. Finally, the last thing that the Oni player is going to be working with are the event deck or the event cards, which have two different features, a lot of them. They will have a special, a special ability and improvements or special uh, secret techniques that will add to whichever troop they place it on. So as the Oni player activates troops, let's go ahead and say, for example, that uh, these guys were out. He could choose to place a event card here, which will add improvements to the overall stats of that player or that, that set of characters. Or he could use a card on this side to improve, uh, give them another special ability, which they will be able to activate when that character is activated. Moving over to the hero players, each player is going to choose one or more hero cards to play as, and each hero card is going to outline a little bit of a backstory on the hero, 
any starting equipment that hero has, the hero's special abilities, as well as the hero's class, and then all the stats for that hero, which are the hero's movement, attack power, defense power, and guile, which is the hero's ability to investigate, interrogate, and decipher the different things in order to gain clue cards, as well as the number of hits that a hero can take before it receives a wound card. On the outside border of the hero is where you'll equip his different weapons, his armor, any followers that hero has, and any additional equipment that hero either does not want to equip or items that the hero is carrying. From here, the, each hero is also going to receive an initiative card, which will denote when they will take their turn during each round, and they will receive eight action cards, which will, they will use during their turn. Each turn a hero must use at least one, and they can use up to two action cards, and each action card will have different features on it. It will either, if you play it on, on this side of the hero's card, will add additional stats to that hero's overall stats, improving them, or if you play an action card on this side, will grant you an additional either action or special ability that the hero will be able to use during his turn. This is one really interesting aspect of the game, as the hero players must decide when and what actions to use each turn, as they will, will not receive their action cards back until they've used all eight of them. So they must really plan out and strategize how they're going to use that, otherwise they might have already used action cards that could be really useful later in the game or during certain other circumstances. Now, heroes are also going to each have one weakness card, which is going to give some sort of a penalty to either the hero or the group as a whole. Now, these cards, again, are action A action cards, so you must use them. But the one benefit to them is that they will allow the hero to heal a number of wound tokens that are on their hero board. So if used properly, the weakness card can be mitigated and really be a benefit to the heroes. So I really like that aspect that you really have to kind of strategize and plan out with the other players on how you're going to conduct your turn, what abilities you're going to use, and etc. and so on. Now, the other feature that each hero has at the beginning of the game is they have a secondary objective or mission, which you'll roll a dice and it will tell you what your secondary mission is. If you're able to accomplish that mission some point during the game, then you will add a card to the overall story arc of that mission on the blue side. If you don't complete it, then you're going to add it to the red side. And these will be worth points at the end of the game and will determine which side wins, whether it is the uh, Ami, uh, Oni player or if the heroes have won, which I'm going to get into. Another aspect of this game to really immerse you in the, the game itself is a storytelling arc, which will be the overall score at the end of the game and will determine whether the hero players have won or if the uh, Oni player has a, was able to defeat the heroes. So whether the mission was successful or not is going to determine which side of this card is going to be played, whether the if the heroes have won, then the blue side is played, and if the Oni player has won, then the Oni player side will be played. And then there will be additional cards that are added to the as the game goes on. So, for example, there are certain tiles that are mission tiles, which, if completed, a mission tile will be added, which is a large tile, so these are worth a lot of points. Whether it is completed by the hero players on the blue side or the, the Oni player on the red side. From there, also, the Oni player is, uh, will also have a card, whether he is defeated or he escapes, and that will be added as well. And if the alarm was sounded, that will be added. The players also have their own secondary objectives, so if those missions are completed or not, those will be added on the red or blue side. And then finally, in the game, the, the hero players are going to make accusations determining if they will be able to tell whether the Oni player, what type of Oni that player is, and who he is disguised as. And they will have three chances at this. If they mess up the first time, they will add the small card to the tile. If they mess up a second time, then they will add the medium card. And finally, if they mess up the guess on the third time, then they add the large card. And they are not allowed to make any additional guesses after that. Now I'm going to take you guys through a couple of turns. Before I do that, one other thing I wanted you guys to keep in mind 
is that this is a prototype copy. None of this is the final production copy that you guys will receive if you pledge for this game. Uh, all the standees will be full-fledged miniatures, which they did send me a couple of the 3D printed ones, which uh, look really good. There's a lot of detail to them and that. So uh, even the uh, Onis, they're just really massive big figures, lots of detail on them. So it looks like these minis are going to be really nice, high quality minis. And all of the different figures will have minis for them. Other than that, this is a really basic scenario I just kind of threw together. Uh, there's also going to be mission tiles, which are going to be separated from your main tiles. And each scenario will tell you how you can access those tiles. For this particular one, we're looking for the little trap doors that will have a uh, symbol on one side of it. And one trap door is a dud or a fake one. And the other one will allow us to have access to this. And this is going to be such a uh, such a like a side mission, so players are going to be working on trying to complete this along with the main mission, which is trying to discover which one of the inhabitants of this palace is the Oni and what Oni that the player is playing as. Which at the beginning of the game, he will take those those uh, evidence cards and put those off to the side. So as you guys remember, he is the Daimyo and he is going to be Oni Cage. So the players do not know that, and he will keep that hidden from the players so that they don't know what he is. Because each round, the players, at the end of the round, the players can make an accusation on what those details are. If they get them correct and the Oni is revealed, and the final battle will start. So let's go ahead and move into the player's turn, which each round is broken into three different steps. The first step is the strategy step, where both the players and the Oni player are going to be trying to play their action cards on their players to enhance them, and will the players themselves will determine the order of the heroes where they will go during the round. So first off, our hero players are going to look at their cards, their action cards, and choose cards to either play on one side or the other. They must play one card, but they can also play two cards, one on each side. So our first player here is going to play this card here to enhance, enhance some of his stats. And he's not going to play a card on this side. So he's going to finish up there. And our other player here, and again, you definitely want to talk with the other players to help strategize and choose which cards you're going to play in that so you guys can all work together. So he's going to play this card. Now these are all done face down so the Oni player doesn't know what the players are playing. And he's not going to play any of the cards as well. And then the players are going to choose which order they want their, their players to activate in. So we're going to go ahead and have our first player be the top card. So he'll be the first one to activate. Now, when the players are doing this, the Oni player is also going to have event cards. Which again, he'll draw one event card per player at the beginning of the game. And these cards again will allow him to either do special abilities or be able to be placed next to his uh, different characters. And when he activates them, they will add improvements to those characters as well. So our only player isn't going to play any action cards this turn. So then we're going to move into the main part of the turn, where each player and each is going to alternate with the, the only player, and they will take turns activating their models. So we're going to flip over the first initiative card, which is going to be our first player here. And so during an activation, a player has three actions which they can use to do different things. They can move around the board by moving to different areas, which areas are separated by the white lines and walls. And within each area, there are a number of dots, which are spaces that the character can move into. Now, as long as there is open areas or open spaces, a character can move in there. If all the spaces are taken up, a character is not allowed to move into that area. So our first player here, each movement action he can move up to two areas as long as there aren't enemies in those areas. So our player is going to move into this area and since there's an enemy in there, that'll end his first action. Otherwise he could have continued moving. From there he's going to perform his second action by moving into another area. So we're going to move up here. And once you move into an area, you can move into any free space in there. So he could have chosen to go here, here, up there, whichever he wants to do. And then his third action is he's going to interrogate that person there to try to gain some clue cards. So I forgot to flip this over, so let's flip these over for both of our characters. 
And then our player is going to roll a number of dice listed at the top here. So our player is going to roll two dice. And our results on these dice must be equal to or less than our total guile value. So right now our guile is at four. So as long as we don't roll higher than a four on these dice, we will pass that test. So we rolled a two, which is lower than our guile. So we've passed a test and we'll gain one clue card or evidence card. So we'll draw that. And then this gets flipped over to the back side. So we have an alarm or alert. So any mundane minions on a tile occupied by at least one hero move to a free space adjacent to a hero and make an attack. So we only have one free space for that hero. And we have... two spaces over here that are next to a hero. So first off, that guy is going to attack our hero, so he's going to roll three attack dice. And our hero's defense is three, so if he rolls three or greater, he'll do a wound to our hero. So a pow will add additional dice to the roll, and he rolled another blank. So he has failed as he only rolled two successes against our defense of three. Now the other two guys are going to attack our other hero here who chose to go very light on defense and so his defense is only a one so that's not good for him. So the first attack is a success so he will take a wound and the second attack from the other guy he has one which is going to be enough to do it so he will receive a second wound. And so that is our first action for our character there, or our last action for our character. So this gets discarded, and we will move into the Oni player's turn, where he is going to choose and activate one of his different characters that are on the board. If he chooses a minion that has multiple models, he will activate each of those models. Now, with it being the beginning of the game, the gray minions he doesn't have direct control over because there's so many of them. He must place corruption, a corruption token on a tile to gain dom uh, domain over those, those miniatures. So he's not going to activate those right now because he can't. So he can choose one of the black, the demonic creatures to activate though. So he's going to go ahead and choose the ninjas. So each of the ninjas is going to get two actions. And so they're going to go ahead and use their actions to move. So our first ninja here can move up to three areas. So he's going to move into our area here. There's only a couple of open spaces for him, which he's not. he doesn't have any spaces to get next to our hero. So he's going to go ahead and go up here. And our other ninja here is just going to hold out there and not move. So then we would head back over to our other player for his turn. And so he is going to go and do some movement. So his first action, he's going to move out of this area into this area. Since he's moving out of an area with uh, enemy models, he takes an entire action to move into another area. From here, then he's going to move again as his second action. So he's going to move into here. And then he's going to go ahead and do another interrogation onto this model here. So we get three dice and we're looking for four or less. So let's go ahead and give it a roll. And he succeeds. So let's go ahead and say, for example, that he didn't succeed. He rolled too high. In that situation, then he's going to add a token. Find it here. He would add a negative one token to the diamond above, which I can't seem to find a negative right now. So... Basically, it would drop the value, which means that you're that he's rolling fewer dice, which increases the chances of a successful test. So he went ahead and he did pass that test. So he's going to get to draw two clue or two evidence cards. So the first one is equipment. He gets to draw one equipment card and place it on a free space on his ID card. So he picked up heavy armor. So he can go ahead and equip that if he wants to. And then the second card he pulled is a Oni. So right now our player has pulled one of the greater demons.
which means that this is not the one that our Oni player is playing as. So we're going to keep this off to the side as a reference for our player so he that they can start building a, a case against which identity and which person he is. And then again, this, this token gets flipped over. And that is our third action for the, our player there. So then it would go back to the Oni player to activate another one of his minions. So let's go ahead and activate our lieutenant here. So he's going to move into our space here and he's going to just stop there. So they're just kind of building a little stronghold in there. At that point, then we move into the end of the round where our players can make an accusation. Right now, they don't really have enough evidence to, to go with, so they're not going to make any accusations yet as they just don't have enough information. The Oni player will get to draw two additional event cards and it would go back into the next round. So then the Oni player would move the, there's a time track, which normally, or a time token that'll normally be there. And so he would move into round two and he would get to place his corruption token on any of the tiles he wants. And then he would receive his first upgrade to his guards. Well, I hope you gave, that gave you guys a good idea of how the game plays. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Creators Kickstarter page and leave any questions you have there as well. I'm sure that they would love to hear you guys and answer any questions you guys have. As always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I do really appreciate the fact that you guys take the time to watch my videos and to leave me comments, and I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this game as well. Is this one that you guys are looking at back in? Uh, if so, why? And if not, why is that? I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about this. And as always, thank you guys, and I will see you guys later.